So you were a meteorologist uh, in the Air Force too. I was. Okay, and explain what you were doing in there. Just talk about the, the the jets and what were the worries and what you had to forecast in that. And and this and that was a few years ago before the, they they say that this weather modification, the people that claim to call it chemtrails, has started in the middle 90s and they're doing the weather modification, their gassiness since the middle 90s. But you were in the Air Force and you've probably seen tons of contrails and looked at them and, and had to be concerned about them before the middle 90s. Yeah, there's nothing new with contrails. Contrails have been around for a long time. In fact, even in Arctic environments where it's extremely cold, like in Siberia or northern Canada or Alaska, you'll get these contrails or this, this, this ice fog form right on the ground behind anything that right. produces uh, just a little bit of heat. Uh, automobiles, they've been right. around since the beginning of the 20th century. Right. So uh, yeah, during my time in the Air Force, uh, um, we used to actually forecast for these contrails, whether or not they would happen, whether they wouldn't, right. and what uh, altitude an a aircraft would have to be at to avoid contrails, because if, uh, if if you're going to go bomb someplace, <laughs> right. big bomber, you right. don't like the B-17s and B-29s, you don't want to see them 100 miles away with these contrails. Right. So that was an important element. Yeah, we've been forecasting contrails. Right. Like that. Of course, today everything is stealthy, and so it's a whole other element. Right. And what the um, um, uh, A and P mechanics t t tell me about the good old days of the turboprop, they were turbocharged engines that had to get up to altitude. Mm -hmm. And to fly at that, they were going to produce as much exhaust and heat and disturbance as the upper air as any jet engine. Mm -hmm. So you would have essentially the same thing on half scale or whatever. And then uh, you're uh, 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 not knowing much about the high bypass ratio uh, turbofan engine. What's your thoughts on that and the size of the contrail? They're going to gulp in more air. They're going to disturb more air. So they're going to leave a bigger contrail, there's no doubt. I, I really don't know about this. Oh, okay. This, you, you know more about this yeah, okay, than I do. I okay. But I will say that uh, you don't have to have a jet engine in order to create contrails. Right. Certainly a, a, a prop engine that, that uh, uh, flies at a high right. altitude can, can do the same thing. And you can see just, wing, just from the exhaust from, from you can the, see wingtip vortices off of jet fighters at low altitude and there's nothing there there's exhaust and pollution coming out of the jet engine of the military aircraft oh, and but, you can see the wingtip vortices from contrails right yeah. right so so it's, uh, well there's so much heat out of the jet engine and the atmospheric conditions aren't right but it's a better uh, laboratory environment on the wingtip to make the contrail explain that it, 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 you're going to see a contrail off the wingtip that's not even a jet engine, but it's just stirring up the air, and it's making a contrail that's visible, but the jet engine is not making that's a contrail. That's fairly rare. You see that when you're landing at like LAX, and it's a very humid atmosphere. You can see just right. before you land, right. you can see that. that ha that's a function of humidity right. more than anything else. At high altitudes like that, right. humidity doesn't really even come into it because it's so, so yeah. low. The, the uh, specific humidity, which is the grams per kilogram of, of water vapor, is really quite low. And so uh, you don't really see a whole lot of that. Right. You might if you're flying through a cloud, like, like a... Yeah, I got some jet fighter video on YouTube that shows an awful lot of that. More likely you'd see uh, San Elmo's fire. That sort of thing. Okay, what is that? that that's a little spark, a little uh, electric discharge because uh -huh. it's so cold. Comes yeah. off the points and tips of uh, aircraft and things like okay. that. Okay, okay. All right, so weather modification. What's your, just a brief, what do you know about that? Well, we used to do that in Alaska. With what? Well, with uh, propane. And uh, we had a thing called cold fog. That's different from ice fog. Cold fog is uh, fog that's very thick but it's in a below freezing environment. And so if you, uh, if you put uh, propane, it's not propane exhaust, it's something that, that causes the area to really cool off. It'll, it'll cause the fog to further condense and actually fall as like a drizzle or something, but it'll clear the air a little bit, just enough for aircraft to land. So if the visibility is zero, it can come up maybe to a half mile, and that's enough for the fighters to land. And you would dump we, that. We, we did that. Uh, you we would dump that like an agricultural sprayer or something. No, no, no. It was a little little propane oh. tanks all around the sides of the approach zone okay. of the air of the aircraft. Well, what do you know about the aerodrome? Okay, th th there are articles and experts that'll talk about it now. But during Vietnam, 
there was all kinds of weather modification programs that happened around Vietnam that were supposed to make it rain or not make it rain. Did you seed clouds? Yeah, something. yeah, seed clouds. What do yeah. you know about? Uh, that actually works to some degree, but the, everything has to be just right. The atmospheric conditions have to be right. perfect. Uh, back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, Operation Storm Fury was this idea that we would go and we would seed hurricanes and make them rain out before they would do any damage. Right. And, uh, that That's not possible, really. Well, they tried it. Oh, well, they, they tried. tried. With, with squadrons of C-130s, and what happened was that it, it had the effect of steering the storm. So sure. So instead of South Carolina being hit, Massachusetts was hit, and you can imagine the uh, litigation then, so they stopped. Right, right, right. Just make it go somewhere else. I mean, they couldn't stop it cold in its track. So what did they dump into the clouds? Barium? Uh, uh, silver, silver iodide and or dry ice. John, okay, uh, what's this? All that does is it cools the environment so that the coalescence on the on the nuclei, the the, the condensation nuclei, would be uh, would be held to long. What do you know? Uh, okay, uh, they claim, and I've been asked over the radio after I explain what I know that they're they're dumping barium salts. They're, these people think we're being posed. I I, I, I I know. I have no idea. I tell the people, I said, if you want to know what comes out of the back of a jet engine, especially a commercial aircraft, you don't have to go to altitude. Just go to an airport and take your readings when the airplane takes off. Because, because the pilot's not going to be pushing some button to dump the poison into the jet engines. It's just, you've got to be crazy. Okay. Is that it? Uh, thank you, Miles. Well, okay. No more questions? Uh, not if you can think something up you want to add to it. No, that, that's good for me. We got the rain coming in, and that's fairly unusual for me. So. Okay.